Hello everyone, welcome back. In this part, we will talk about why do we even have government in the insurance markets? Why do we have social insurance? And the reason is adverse selection. Let's get started. So individuals know better about themselves, right? Their likelihood of getting into an accident than the insurer. So this is asymmetric information. Asymmetric information means insurer and insured, they have different kinds of information regarding the true risk of the insured getting into that negative state of the world, right? So let's say, talk about health insurance. You probably know better about your health problems, your health, overall health, and your expected utilization or usage than does the insurance company, okay? So therefore, insurance... Uh, will work such that the insurer will be reluctant to sell the person a policy at an actually fair price because I really don't know if this person is healthy or unhealthy. What if I collect all the unhealthy people, right? Why? Because they are high risk, which sounds sad, but it is a fact. All right, so we are going to assume two groups of people. Each group of people have hundreds of individuals. First group has 5% chance of getting injured. These are careless people. The second group are a group of very careful people. They only have 0.5% chance of getting injured. The payout is $30,000 when these people are injured. Let's take a look at this example. So this is an insurance pricing in real world with people in separate groups of consumers with separate different levels of uh, probability of getting injured. Okay, let's get started. Full information, asymmetric information, asymmetric information. We're going to take a look at full information, which means insurer and insured, they all know everything. In my forehead, it says I'm careful. On your forehead, it says you're careless, for instance. And we are going to look at separate pricing approach. In the second case, the insurance company, in the second case, the insurance company does not know here, doesn't know whether you're careful or careless, and they'll try to do separate pricing. And in the last case, we're going to take a look at in which we have again a symmetric information insurance company doesn't know, and they're going to try average pricing. So let's get started. Okay. With full information, the insurance company can tell the high-risk people from low-risk. Therefore, it charges high-risk people high price and low-risk people low price. So competition forces it to charge an actually fair price. Okay, so let's take a look at the premium for accident-prone and accident-almost-free uh, careful people. Okay, so... The premium for accident prone is probability of their injury, 5%, times $30,000. So this is actually at zero, uh, you know, 95% of $0, right? So we're just doing 5% times $30,000, which is $1,500 is careless people's actually fair insurance premium. For the careful people, their probability of getting an accident is 0 0.5 times 30,000 plus 95%, 0 0.95 times $0, that's zero. That is going to be half a percent of 30,000 will be $150, okay? So careless people will pay $1,500 insurance premium Careful people, 150. So how much does the insurance company collect? So there are hundreds of these people here and hundreds of these people. So 100 times $1,500 from the accident prone will be collected. This is $150,000 if you multiply this. And from the careful people, $150 actually fair insurance premium collected. Each person, I have hundreds of such people. So you have $15,000. So you have $150,000 plus fifteen. dollars Total premium paid to the company will be $165,000. So what's the expected payout by the company? It's, a, it's the same situation, right? With, with this probability, 5% probability, 
you will get thirty thousand dollar damage from the careless people times hundred of these people, and then with half percent probability damage uh, from careful people will be thirty thousand times this hundred fifty times hundred fifteen thousand. So total benefits paid out one hundred sixty five. Net profits to insurers is zero. So we're going to assume that insurance company doesn't put administrative costs yet. So zero is actually not bad. You broke even. We'll talk about that later because there are worse cases that can happen. So when insurance company collects 165, the actual expected costs are also 165. So let's take a look at the insurance uh, company is in a situation, this case, where insurance company doesn't know who is careful, who is careless. This is called asymmetric information. So it could then continue to charge separate premiums to different groups of people, taking the person's word for what two they are. Are you careful or careless? So, so what happens is that accident Prone people have no... Let's say I'm accident prone. Do you think I'm going to tell the company I, I am prone to accidents? Absolutely not. Why would I say that? Because if I say that, I'm going to actually pay 10 times more. Instead of $150, i am going to pay $1,500. So what happens here is that... Look, this is so much interesting. The insurance company collects $150 from accident prone because they just lied they're like oh yeah we are careful right and also collected 150 dollars from careful actually careful people so this is fifteen thousand dollars plus fifteen thousand dollars this is thirty thousand dollars oh my gosh well guess what accident prone people will still get an accident at a much higher rate and they're still going to run $150,000 payouts and careless, careful people also will get an accident, very small chance. Their expected payout will be $15,000. So the company still has to pay $165 out because we do have careless people in the sample. So $165 is what company pays out. Company has $30,000 minus $165. Oh my gosh, insurance company is losing money. $135,000 negative. Insurance company will lose money. Go out of business. So in this case, company loses money. It will not offer insurance. Thus, the market fails. Individuals will not be able to obtain insurance. This is very, this is very sad. Last case, another potential alternative is that insurance company understands that I cannot tell who is careful, who is careless, right? What I'm going to do though, they say, I'm going to charge everybody uniform premium, okay? I'm going to charge everybody average. So let's take a look here, okay? So, all right, so look, careful, careless people, Careless people are supposed to pay 1500 plus careful folks are supposed to pay 150 This is 1650 Okay, let's just divide it by two, right? I can charge people $825. Everybody is paying $825. Okay. What happens? What happens here is that I cannot tell people apart. There's asymmetric information. That's real life situation. I'm going to charge everybody $825. So the average cost for the population is $165,000. And the claims divided by 200 people or $825. Or you can calculate it by adding the actuarially fair premium by the... Careful people, careless people divided in two. You could do this like I did before. Why? Because I know equal number of people are in the sample. But the best way of to do is is like this: the average cost of the pop the average cost for the population of the insurance is one hundred sixty five thousand dollars divided by two hundred people. So everybody pays a twenty five, right? This sounds like a great idea, is it? 
So here's the thing. With this price structure, none of the careful people will buy the policy. Why? Because actually fair insurance for them is $150, but you are telling them to pay $825. Look, folks, I am risk aversive. But if you try to sell me a flood insurance for $20,000, my flood risk is low. I'm not going to buy that. It's too expensive. If you try to sell a homeowner's insurance for $50,000, I will be like, no, that's a lot. Okay. So these careful people actually fairly priced insurance for them is $150. You tell them to pay $825, they shall not do that. Okay. So what happens is that only careless people will buy the policy. So $825 will be paid by each careless person. Hundreds of such people are available, right? $825 times $182,500 minus... So only careless people bought the insurance, right? So $30,000, right? Times 5% times 100 of these people, you have to pay out 150 because you don't have careful people in your sample anymore. So 82,500 minus 150 negative 67,500. Again, market failed, okay? Again, the company loses money and then they will not offer insurance. Thus, the market fails again in a pooling, what we call is pooling equilibrium, where, where you cannot tell who is who. Look, car, car insurance companies are very smart. They started doing this. They give you a nice premium, actually fair premium that you would pay. Then if you get into an accident, they increase your premium. If you're careful, no accidents consistently, they will lower your premium, right? Allstate and some other companies. By the way, this video is not sponsored, so I'm not going to talk about companies. But all those companies will not, absolutely will not um, increase your premium if you don't get into an accident. Another thing, for instance, some insurance companies are asking you to turn on a tracking device that actually measures your braking, your speed, the way you drive, do you drive a little crazy? So that machine measures, give you a grade A, B, C, A plus and lower your insurance. But what if I just reject that, refuse to use that machine? It's okay, you won't get the discounts, why? Because you are signaling that you are maybe not careful. That's very, very interesting, folks. All right, so adverse selection plagues the insurance market. Companies do lots of things to understand what kind of a driver are you. People will buy insurance if it's fair deal to them, if it is actually fair premium. Even risk lovers will buy insurance if it is priced actually fairly, okay? Only the high risk take up on the policy. If this is the case, if we live in a world only high risk people or, oh, I need health insurance, I need five surgeries to ha happen to me, right? I go ahead and buy the insurance, then that market will fail. Insurance market will not survive. So this is the reason why government interferes in the insurance markets. Not for current insurance, but government requires everybody in Texas to have liability car insurance so that there's no negative externalities on those who are fully insured. Okay, so I will talk about insurance markets and adverse selection problem a little bit more in next part. In next part, don't forget to. Hit the like on this video. I am not tired of saying you're not tired of hitting the like. And also subscribe to my channel. I'll see you later. Bye.